Right, this is the uh, video um, about chronic adaptations for the skeletal system. So that's long-term changes in the skeletal system. We're going to look at three things. Increased bone strength, increased ligament strength, and then just a handful of other adaptations. So let's get started. Increased bone strength comes about basically and primarily due to an increased amount of calcium that is being stored uh, in the skeletal system. So as we store more and more calcium up to a limit um, that calcium is one of the crucial ways that determines the density of that bone so the more calcium that's stored the more dense the bone is that's a benefit of course because it means that the bones are less brittle less likely to snap or break or uh, to suffer fracture of any kind also where the ligaments and the tendons are um, where they attach to the bone um, when we place the ligaments and the tendons through mechanical stress, that is, we use them, basically, and we put, um, we put a strain through those ligaments and tendons, um, calcium is stored in that location. So it strengthens the link between the ligaments, the tendons, um, and the bone, uh, which means, of course, it's less likely to tear from the bone. Uh, another great benefit of uh, increasing calcium um, storage um, and one of the reasons why calcium is stored is because calcium is really important for um, transmitting electrical impulses uh, in the muscle cells um, and without calcium, without calcium ions uh, in the muscle cells themselves uh, there would be no contraction and so we need to make sure that there's plenty of calcium uh, available in the body um, stored in the skeleton of course and then therefore adding to bone strength but available to be used uh, in muscle contraction and another benefit of that of course uh, having lots of calcium stored is that we're avoiding uh, osteoporosis that is bones which are um, liable to break bones which are brittle because they're porous they have holes in essentially which would normally be filled up and thickened out by the presence of calcium another benefit um, from exercise uh, to the skeletal system over, over a period of time, over the long term, is that we increase the strength of the ligaments themselves. So as we know, ligaments are there to attach bone to bone, um, and part of their role is to control the range of movement um, so that we don't um, bend or extend or flex a joint beyond its normal range, but also to align the movement um, so that the movement is, is coordinated and well aligned. On top of that, uh, ligament stabilises the joint, um, so keeps it steady. Um, very useful in particular in the ankle, for example, um, because we don't want too much wobble in our ankle because uh, it can be a, a dangerous one to, to tear or to damage because obviously it impacts walking and running and movement uh, more generally. Um, essentially what happens um, is that the collagen, which we've talked about previously, which is the connective tissue that makes up the ligament, becomes more aligned um, in, uh, along the, the movement line, if you, if you will, and the direction or the alignment of movement. The connective tissue becomes more aligned and it becomes thicker and stronger. So we allow um, further stretch um, without the risk of tearing. So if you imagine the ligament a little bit like a resistance band, we have from very thin... Uh, to very thick resistance bands. Um, chronic adaptation to exercise sees the ligaments move um, more thick, um, more towards like a, a thicker resistance band than a thinner one, um, which as we know means it's a lot harder to break, to snap, um, and there's a lot more control there uh, around that joint. Um, and the picture example here is the example uh, of the ankle. Um, so if we've got nice strong ligaments in and around the ankle, it stabilises and steadies the joint and it allows us um, to avoid injury, essentially. Um, a couple of other adaptations, just to mention briefly. Um, one is that the um, response of the hyaline cartilage, which we know is the cartilage around the ends, particularly of long bones, um, so for example at the end of the femur, um, that cartilage thickens up as a result of um, exercise, uh, long-term exercise and certainly impact exercise. And, and the thickening of that cartilage, um, and we know the cartilage is there to protect the bone, but it also stores synovial fluid. So more cartilage very simply means better protection, more available synovial fluid to lubricate the joint and prevent injury. Um, on top of that, we have the increased production of synovial fluid, 
um, which we know is, is stored there in the hyaline cartilage and it is uh, secreted during exercise once it starts to warm up, as we've looked at previously. But regular exercise means that the viscosity, that's the thickness, the viscosity of the synovial fluid um, is reduced, so it becomes more runny. And as it becomes more runny, therefore, we get better joint lubrication um, and therefore less uh, less friction in the joint, less wear and tear in the joint. And another benefit of that synovial fluid is it actually is there to provide uh, the nutrients to the hyaline cartilage itself. So nutrients within the synovial fluid uh, are carried by the synovial fluid to the cartilage and keeps that cartilage alive. That's it for uh, adaptations of the skeletal system. Um, thanks for watching.